Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me as always via Zoom is... Is Matthew, you should not go against the values of the JSA in order to fulfill your mission, no matter how badly you want to beat the bad guy, Haas. That's a long middle name, Matt. One, it's of your, one, one of your longest. Yeah, it is one of my yeah. longest. Yes. Um, do you legally change your middle name each week? Yeah, it costs a lot of money to do this, actually. Yeah. You know, you could just say it, and you don't have to actually legally go downtown and change it and everything. It doesn't feel as real that way, so kind of have to. Uh, just in order to believe that it's true, I guess. So do they you know, know you down there? Like when you walk in, they're like, Hey Matt. Oh, I show up about three times a week. Um, so yeah, you know, sometimes I'll bring donuts, you know, stuff like that. So do you give, do you, it, it, what kind of donuts do you bring? Is it like Dunkin donuts or Tim Hortons? Dunkin', or? Well, yeah, the Tim bits, you know, of course you gotta have those, those, those donut hole things. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, some kind of high end bakeries. I actually drive all the way up to Maine sometimes because they got a really good bakery in a town in Maine that I can't think of a name of right now because it's a totally fictional story. And then I'll, you know, drive back, you know, with the donuts, like a fresh kind of bag, you know, to keep the donuts fresh because it's kind of a long drive, you know, from Maine to Toledo. You know, um, I'll show up and I'll, I'll give them, you know, the donuts and then they'll like, oh, what do you want? You change your name, you know, this week too. And I'll be like, I'll just come up with something on the spot right then because I haven't really thought it out. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds like a lot of work, Matt. It's a lot. It really is. It's, it's not much payoff, really. But um, one time I did actually come in with a full duck, just not, not a live duck, you know, prepared duck, you know, for, for you know, dinner. Oh wow! And, uh, they seem they seem to like that. Yeah, that's 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 like you know, very very um you know, kind of you. You know, yeah, I try I try to I try to be mm-hmm. a decent person. When you bought the duck, did you just tell them to put it on your bill? No, <laughs> I don't like puns. Not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. So um, today on the show. <laughs> We are covering the latest episode of Star Girl. Um, yeah, this is intro had nothing to do with no, that show. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there is some news in the Star Girl world that we can um, get into really quick before we go into the breakdown of the episode. Okay. So um, it seems like, um, it, it, well, it, it not seems like it is true. Um, Joel McHale has been upped to a series regular for season three. Yes. As Starman. Nice. Yeah. So uh, we'll be seeing more of uh, Starman next season, I guess. So That's going to be super, super interesting. Yeah. The di- dynamics. Dynamics? The dynamics yeah. of... Because of, I'm certain he's going to try to basically become Starman again. Mm-hmm. And Courtney's going to be like the fuck you are like <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for the past two years. Like, and I got a feeling that, I mean, for this episode alone, I've been really, really pissed at the JSA and I've been progressively getting more angry with them of how they treated Pat. Yeah. And I think if this season three, I don't think Pat's going to be like a sidekick anymore. I think oh, he's no. like, we're equal now. Like, fuck you. Like, you know, like, <laughs> What really makes me wonder is if he's coming back as a good guy or a bad guy. Right, exactly. Because, I mean, it, I mean, we're, we're we're led to believe that he's coming back as Starman, too, but he could be coming back as a lookalike, or he could be coming back as, you know, somebody that we think is Starman and turns out is not, you know. 
Right. I mean, exactly. Joel McHale. Yeah. It didn't say that he's going to be Starman, did it? It just said. Oh, it kind of did, gonna... but it didn't really say, you know, but then again, you don't know. You know what I mean? True, true, true. Yeah. Or it could be freaking Brainwave doing shit again to make himself look. Well, no, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, he's well, who knows? Back, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who knows with these shows? You never know. Um, yeah. It's, it's always a. Uh, it's always a mystery in these shows, and nobody's yeah. ever dead. Um, That's true. Not really. Yeah, no, nobody ever dies in um, science fiction or um, or soap operas. I was, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, like, oh, this person was dead, and two years later, it comes back. And, yeah, sometimes oh, you can yeah. see their dead body and everything, and they still somehow are yeah. back alive. You know, you are just yeah. like what? <laughs> it's like I faked my own death. I was yeah. Pulling a Loki year or, or whatever, or I was, I was in a coma for two years, and you know. What if they like got so ridiculous with the death too? It's like, dude, I literally saw your body get cut in half. There's no way you could have come back for this. I <laughs> swear, I think <laughs> they've done stuff like that on on well, soap okay. on soap operas or something. You know, or like you see somebody get shot like twenty times, and somehow right. they're still alive. You know. Like so, you gotta keep up in the ante. Like, okay, I saw them cut you into four pieces. Okay, yeah. there's no way. Yeah, well, yeah. No, they come back four times now because there are four pieces. <laughs> All right, I saw you cut in sixty four pieces, and they put each piece in a different part of the world mm-hmm. hidden. No one, no one would know what this part was except for the person who hid it. And each person was forbidden to tell the other person where they put the piece, so there's no way that they could ever make the connection. It's I like, saw well, them, what I, I got to tell you, you know? I saw them cut you into four pieces. They, 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 uh, <laughs> they, they cremated half of you. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Then they dissolved the other in acid. There's no way you could have come back. But, uh, what, what, what do you want me to say? I'm here. Uh, you know, someone's got to pay the mortgage and, you know, and, uh, <laughs> I tried to become a movie star, but it didn't work out. So now I'm back <laughs> or, or wow. wait, I'm back, but I'm a different actor. And, um, but, but you got to believe right. I'm still the same guy that you saw two years ago die. <laughs> Yeah, which is going on right now on uh, General Hospital, anyway. So, oh, um, really? yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah, they've got a uh, the the character of uh, Drew Kane is coming back, but now being played by a different actor, and he was dead too. So it's just like, <laughs> wow, I don't know, because they the original actor didn't want to come back, so it was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, <laughs> Anyways, back to our topic at hand here. We've got um, this episode is entitled Summer School Chapter 9, directed by Andy Armaganian um, and uh, written by Alfredo um, Septine and uh, Turi Meyer. Um, so it starts out several decades earlier. And um, Eclipso is uh, messing with uh, Bruce Gordon, <laughs> which is an interesting. I mean, that is a character. He is a character in the comic books. I did look him up, so Bruce is actually a character. It's just funny that he has like Bruce Wayne's first name and Commissioner Gordon's last name. Oh, interesting. I wonder if that was intentional or just. Uh... Lazy writing. Nah, I don't know, know. what. <laughs> could be, or could have been like a, a, you know, like an homage. Like, ah, yeah. I wonder if anyone does this. You know, yeah. Type of painter. It's just weird. Um, okay, so so, anyways, um, Eclipso he ends up persuading Bruce Gordon to give him control of his body, and so then then we uh, we cut to uh, years later. After that, and the original JSA is attending Rebecca McKnighter's funeral after the events that we saw in the first episode of the season. Mm-hmm. So, um, then, um, Starman encounters Shade that, uh, that the only way, and he talks to him and he finds out that the only way to get rid of Eclipso is to, uh, kill his host, Bruce. And that'll force Eclipso back into the the Black Diamond. 
<clears throat> yeah. So, um, it's like, they've got this, like, vow not to kill people. But, you know, you've got this, like, whole thing going on. And we have, um, we get to see for the first time on um, Stargirl, Jay Garrick, played by John yeah. Wesley Shipp. Yes. Awesome. Yes. So now we got the official crossover, kind of. Yeah. Um, from The Flash, because Jay Garrick, and it's that exact Jay Garrick, it's not someone else. It's, no. Um, you know, that you see sometimes in The Flash. Um, you know, he's, uh, but this is obviously like, you know, many, many decades you know, before, but. So that's pretty cool. Uh-huh. So it does kind of connect the world of the Flash to the world of Stargirl. Yeah, and in like a, a, a weird way, but because it'll be, you know, there's going to be a lot of probably retconning. Because you know, on the Flash, he never ever he never really talked about his days in the JSA. Then again, though, he probably just maybe didn't thought it was relevant to talk about it, or maybe he still has kind of bad feelings about you know that time or whatever. So. <clears throat> you know yeah it's it's kind of interesting um okay so we've got in this episode here um we've got pat and jay garrick both are advising eclipso i mean i mean of 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 uh, are are advising <laughs> sorry <laughs> are advising um Starman not to kill Eclipso because of that, you know, that goes against their, their code of conduct. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so, but when Eclipso then threatens the families of the JSA and defeats the rest of them, Starman reluctantly kills Bruce. Yeah. So then he can get rid of Eclipso. So, I mean, and, and the problem with it is it's not even that they're killing Eclipso, really, because they're not. They're killing Bruce, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the thing is, it's like Bruce kind of died the moment that he let Cl- Eclipso take over his body, you know? Right, and I mean, there might be some aspect of him that's still somewhat conscious of who he is, but, like, my question, though, is how... How did he break Eclipso out of the diamond in the first place? And how did Bruce do that himself? You know, um, that is a good question. Odd. They may answer that in future episodes, I guess. If, um, if I don't he know. could have done that without killing anyone, then maybe they could have put him back into the diamond. Because the only thing we know so far is that the cosmic staff is the only thing that could. Get, break him out of the diamond. Yeah, and then we then we know that Starman killed him with the cosmic staff. So did Bruce have the staff at some point? There, there's got to be there's got to be other ways to do it, you know, than just the I cosmic guess. staff. Yeah, maybe through like dark magic or something, or you know, whatever. Um, so, um, I follow uh, John Wesley Ship on uh, Facebook, mm-hmm. and somebody. Uh, what somebody said on there, oh my God, Starman is a dick. Loved seeing Garrick being so good to Stripesy. Exactly. And, but um, so um, John Wesley Ship responded. And he says, uh, he says, thank you. Um, I want to stick up for Starman a bit. Um, here, recall Sylvester used to be an assistant, so he was an assistant as well, like a, you know, a sidekick. And oh, maybe okay. that colors his thinking around um, hierarchy of status. What he said may have been offensive. Clearly, Jay believes Pat has earned his stripes. But the way um, Joel spoke with firm, while firm was not, um, while firm was not. Remember, it's Pat whom <laughs> Sylvester um, goes to when he realizes the full evil of Eclipso. So, yeah, I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. I mean, partially, but yeah, the thing is, well, this is not the first Pat's not Pat. Um, Sylvester throughout the whole show has been talking down to Pat in almost every single 
yeah flashback any, any so yeah so it, it's hard to say but i mean it, it's almost like you kind of understand where he's coming from and but maybe things will get more explained once we get more of joel McHale on right. the show um Plus, dude either pat's memory so they might be <clears throat> clouded by his own mm-hmm. insecurities about being a sidekick too you know so yeah. um but what, what what was he meant that when when was what was Starman ever a sidekick to anyone else? I never, I never heard them say that in the show anywhere. In the comic books. Oh, in the comics. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay, well, well gotcha. they kind of did. I mean, it was, it was stars and stars and stripes were the original. Like, it, but it was still. It's like he was kind of like an assistant to the other people before he became his own superhero. I guess. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. That was when he was called a Star Spangled Kid. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's right. He was kind of like an almost like an intern. Yeah, he was kind of like, yes, Ro- he was kind of like that, Robin to Batman in a way, but he was like that to the whole JSA. But that's the thing, though. Yeah. He was allowed to rise the ranks. Well, they won't even give Pat the chance to even do yeah. that. So it's a difference. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so I could see why Pat feels kind of left out. It's like, well, you know. Like, yeah. especially when Wildcat called him the mechanic. I'm like, dude, this guy built a fucking robot. Like, that's yeah. not a, a quote mechanic. Like, well, he had you know, he hadn't like, built uh, Stripe yet. Well, no, but, but he still. had to have the, he still had to have the <laughs> yeah the so, intuition yeah. to be someone really great. You know what I mean? Like, so um, yeah. So then we 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 cut back to like um. Well, we're cutting back here to, uh, you know, present day. Um, mm-hmm. Courtney and Beth are strategizing a plan to defeat Eclipso without Yolanda and Rick. And then there's this storm rolling into the town. Get- Barbara ends up getting caught in the storm. And, uh, while she's uh there, she sees she sees icicle in the back seat of her car. <laughs> um. Then um. Then we cut to Mike, who uh sees Cameron attacking and taunting him over his uh, birth mother leaving him while seeking revenge uh for his father's death. <laughs> So, uh, basically, he's, you know, we got this whole, like, scene of, uh, of Cameron attacking Mike, basically. We don't know if any of this is really happening or not yet. Which, I mean, but we pretty much know that it's all Eclipso doing this shit, you know? Kind of, if you have any kind of common sense. I, yeah, I pretty much thought that was the case as soon as the episode started, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, beforehand, not so much, because we we saw the house kind of icing over, but we also saw that Cameron has developed his own kind of ice powers in a few episodes before that. So, you know. Yeah. I was like, well, it's possible. Maybe he's coming over, or maybe, or, you know, maybe he doesn't even know he's doing it. He's not, like, doing it for malicious reasons. Maybe he's just coming over and he's icing up the place, you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, and during the during the little fight um, that Mike Mike and Cameron are having, um, Cameron kills the dog. Uh, ah, pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh. Basically, um, we find out, like you said, it's like Eclipso imprisoning these people in their minds, you know. Um, So, do you want to take a break here, Matt, and then we'll talk about the rest of the episode? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? 
Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guests every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Hope to see you there. And we are back. Back, back, back. So, um, <laughs> so we've, we've got this. Okay. So, um, Pat is in the basement and he ends up seeing, he sees Bruce and the JSA taunting him over his silence regarding the truth about Eclipso's imprisonment <laughs> until, um, and then, um, Shade awakens Barbara and Courtney awakens Mike and Pat both. So <laughs> Pat tells Courtney the the hard and tragic truth of the original JSA and that her and then basically she finds out also that Barbara already knows. Which yeah. you know, it's like that's the thing with these shows. <laughs> <laughs> It's the lies. <laughs> it's the the double betrayal because too she was like, like oh well, what's my mom gonna think? Like thought she had one over him, and she's like, well, she knows too, and it's like what? Uh. <laughs> but it's 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 so like all these CW shows. It's like all the like so much would be settled easily if people just didn't keep things from each other. Exactly. Well, because too. And, um, so, you know, yeah, she confronts him at the very end of the episode. She starts yelling at both of them. And then you, oh, God, you got that, that kid, mm, that laugh, that smile, so creepy, like you said. Mm -hmm. Um, he's just like, haha. The thing is, too, is you notice that Courtney was the only person that Eclipso really can't get into her head at all. Yeah. Like, always Beth, or it's Beth, it's Rick, it's Pat now, it's Barbara, it's Mike. Mm -hmm. Court's been the only person so far that hasn't been really affected, but now he's got something on her because of the lies that her parents told her. Yeah. So now he might be able to get in her head. Now he's got the whole team that he can just sort of play like a fiddle, like the fiddler. Well, no, the fiddler doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> as, far, as far as we know. Um, I think there should be a team up of the fiddler and the riddler. And, um, wait. Yes. <laughs> Why not? They're both DC characters. Yeah, <laughs> that should be a new series of comic books. Um, <clears throat> yes. Wow. Um, so, um, so Courtney lashes out at her mother and stepfather. Well, you know, yeah, he's He's in the boyhood form of Bruce Gordon, like you said. And he watches triumphantly from afar. <laughs> God. Why does he always choose? I don't understand. How, how does he even know what Bruce looked like as a kid? I don't know. It's, and he was wearing, but he's wearing the same clothes that he was wearing um, in, when he was at his house when he was like about to kill himself or whatever. Yeah. He's wearing the same exact shirt and pants, just shrunk down, mm -hmm. you know, size and um or may maybe there's maybe like there's a part of 
Bruce that's still alive, but like maybe like his child self or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, some kind of weird thing. I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I still am trying to figure out this whole, um, why, yeah, like you said, why he's the freaking in the child form. Probably just to be as creepy as possible, because it is creepy. Um, like, it's, or it could be that he's even, saying, like, plus it could be that he can easily, you know, like, fit in better in different places as a kid as opposed to an adult, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Like the whole innocence factor, yeah. Yeah. Like, because, like, Yolanda, like, you know, like you said, you know, gave him a lollipop, and he's like, oh, I'm scared, or whatever type of thing, and... <clears throat> yeah, it's... it's. I, I just, I don't know, I don't, I mean, it's it's so fucking creepy. <laughs> Sorry, that's all it I can is. say. Like, when, you, when you got kids, like, in horror movies, especially, like, Children of the Corn, or, or any movie or like Pet that... Or Pet Cemetery. Yeah, Pet Cemetery is a good yeah. one. <laughs> or, just to, like having kids like say like racist shit that like only an adult would say like i'm not saying that kids can't be prejudiced but usually Mm -hmm. they're still like learning like the prejudice vocabulary over time like they don't have like the full-fledged neo-nazi like probably you know what i mean like like when he says like oh your kind steals like you never see like an eight-year-old say that it's like like, it's it's like the video (laughs) your video you showed me the other day of um who is the little girl that, uh, <laughs> oh, God. that 10 year old doing like motivational speaking. Yeah. yeah. That was so unnatural. And, and so creepy as wild. fuck. <laughs> and she's like, like, remember, I was like, I'm 10 years old. Remember what it was like to be 10 when you had energy. And it's like, bitch, I'm sorry. It's mean to say, it's yeah, like, you still got baby teeth. Like I can't take you seriously. Exactly. Okay? Like, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be ageist, but there comes a certain point where you can't tell me shit like about my life. Like, like, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> the, um, it's just, ugh. so, yeah, um, exactly. Anyways, uh, here's some, uh, trivia about this episode here. Um, in the, in the flashbacks, the JSA treats Pat like a hired hand. Mm-hmm. Saying things like "you're the mechanic," and uh, Sylvester acts like he is a subordinate to him. In the comics, the JSA acknowledged him as an equal, and he was mm-hmm. a partner and mentor to the Star Spangled Kid. Interesting. So, yeah. So they changed did. changed things a little bit here, I guess. Yeah. I, I always did find it. I mean, maybe it's just their way of like like making things seem more extreme like with hierarchies because like the fact that he's seven years older than sylvester yeah it just feels even worse that he's a sidekick mm-hmm. like i don't know like i mean I, it's bad no matter what but it's just like maybe maybe it's just my maybe i'm like i don't know but like for it it is like kind of like again, like having like the ten year old doing motivational speaking. Like so, have a young a younger person bossing around an older person just feels. So is he weird. older than Starman? Yeah, he said he's seven years older than. Oh jeez. Like, season, season one, he said he's like he's like seven years older than than Starman. Okay. And yet Starman treats him like he's the older boss type yeah. of guy. It just feels feels weird. Weird. It does. Yeah. So I. Uh, during the flashback sequences, references are made to several JSA members who have yet to appear in the series. This includes uh, the Spectre, Doctor Fate, and the Hawks, i.e., Hawkman and Hawk Girl, Hawk Woman. Oh, awesome. um, versions of some of these characters have previously appeared in other Arrowverse shows, though. Um, when uh, Pat closes the trunk containing old JSA files it can be seen that his former address was 1941 Siegel Way. This is clearly a reference to the year that the star-spangled kid, Sylvester, Sylvester Pemberton, and stripesy Pat Dugan debuted, as well as their co-creator, Jerry Siegel, who also co-created Superman. Mm-hmm. Um, so John Wesley Shipp joins the episode as Jay Garrick of the Flash, making his first official Arrow making this the first official Arrowverse crossover for Stargirl. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and though he's not established, but he's not established necessarily as being the same character, but we know he probably is. So <laughs> he, is. he has to be. I yeah. mean, there's no way he's not. Um, Earth Two. Yeah, that's where he comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, even like yeah, like you said, even if everything went down to Earth Prime or whatever. Yeah. Well, he got he got out before Earth Two mm-hmm. was destroyed, so it's he's safe. You know, like, it's like. <laughs> yeah. But this isn't, you know, but this Earth is still existing, so it, we we know there's a multiverse, even though they don't know it. You know, in uh in the um Prime verse there, you know. Yeah, most people still don't know, or it could have just been recreated to the point where even past events now are just seen as, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. we do know that there, 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 there there have been uh, other, there are people on other shows that are from other universes as well. So yeah, I don't want to give away anything for any other shows if people haven't seen them yet. So, (laughs) but there are characters on other shows in the Arrowverse that are from other multiverses so oh okay yeah cool so um any other final thoughts here matt on this episode before we uh, wrap things up or any speculation or anything uh speculation wise i think we're gonna probably see starman or whoever he is show up probably maybe the last episode or maybe an episode before that yeah. Um, hopefully, it looks like um, Jesse slash the new Green Lantern is probably going to show up because they even showed her in the trailer for the next episode. Oh, okay. Uh, that Pat's going to try to kind of recruit her to help out. Um, it would be nice if the Shade and Dr. McNighter can maybe show up from like the Shadowlands because yeah. apparently there's other people in the Shadowlands. Because yeah. Dr. McNider said they, or I think they see me. So whoever mm-hmm. they are, a um, bunch of people, maybe bad people, I don't <laughs> know. Um, yeah. um, would it be nice if, if some of the other people like Dr. Fate would show up? I'm not sure if there's any yeah. indication of that or not. But It'd be nice to see some of the other JSA, but I mean... Some most of them are dead, I think. So it's hard to say. I, yeah, I, like I really, Owlman. I really, I really want to find out how. Though, um, I, I, I'm not trusting Joel McHale being Sylvester. I think he might be a lookalike or something. I don't know yet. You yeah, know, his, his, the way he's he's the way he talks is like got a very sinister vibe to it. Yeah, you know, it doesn't sound like him. Because, like you said, unless sorry, I can't talk. Unless, like you said, maybe he's like gone dark or something. You know, I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, hopefully, we get more of Joel McHale soon, and hopefully, in the future, we get some more of uh, John Wesley Shipp because it was cool to see him on there. Um, do know that he I know, is. Totally. I do know he's. Uh, he's talked on his uh, Facebook page about being. Uh, He's going to be in season eight of uh, Flash, at least. So we know that much. So, yeah. So it'll be cool to see him in that. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, folks, um, that's all for this episode. Um, be sure to check us out on um, all 2 real com for links to all of our social media profiles and all the places that you can listen to the show if you don't like where you're listening to it now, which, I mean, why wouldn't you? But, um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the um you also check out our t public you can get some cool shirts and things um with our logo on it um also uh you can uh check out our patreon and help us out a little bit with the show um you know keep uh keep the lights on as they say <laughs> and um also uh give us a five star review on apple Podcasts. it helps people find the show um, but until next time, folks, um, be safe out there, be kind, rewind, rewind. um, wear a mask, wear a condom. Um.
<laughs> and bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com. Thank you.